Every year, counties across Pennsylvania spend anywhere from a few thousand to more than a million dollars investigating child abuse reports. The latest data from the State Department of Human Services reveals more than 50 children died because of abuse and another 90 almost lost their lives. Fox 43's Grace Griffithson is taking a look at the most severe cases from our area and how some may go under the radar in tonight's Children of the State. 12-year-old Maxwell Schallenberger of Lebanon County, 14-year-old Gracie Packer of Bucks County, 9-year-old Jared Tutko of Dauphin County. The children, police say killed by the people who should have loved them the most. Being a hardened Marine that I am, that just ripped, and a granddad and a parent, that just ripped me apart, and I'm so sorry. Representative Frank Ryan didn't know Schallenberger personally, though the 12-year-old's horrific death more than one year ago still leaves the Lebanon County lawmaker unsettled. I did not, but the case, I just, I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> Police say Schallenberger's parents starved the boy, neglected him, and left him in a dark room in their Anvil Township home, alone with no escape. I just keep thinking that he was so close to a school hearing children play while he was being abused. I just can't conceivably fathom. Soon after, and just three miles from Schallenberger's house, prosecutors filed 20 felony charges against Stephanie and Robert Duncan of North Anvil Township. The couple accused of physically punishing their five adopted children, depriving them of food, water, heat, and bathroom privileges. Thankfully, law enforcement say they survived. You have a mom and a dad who are the two people in this world that are supposed to give unconditional love and support and warmth. And instead, they've been the exact opposite. They were the daily tormentors. They were the providers of horrific violent abuse. My wife called and a neighbor up the street, she called on them. If that's the case, how come the children weren't removed from the home? Child advocates say it's not that simple. Yep. Yeah. well, it is a very complex system. John Rubin is the deputy secretary for the Pennsylvania Office of Children, Youth and Families. Our children and youth caseworkers do not have the authority to remove a child from the home or to keep a child from their homes. That's kidnapping the same as it would be for anybody else. When families refuse access to their homes. The only real um, leverage we have, for lack of a better word, authority we'd have, would be to file a court order. Can, can families hide what they're doing? Can a family fool us? It, it can happen, right? Can they can they um, clean up the house before we come? And then if we, if we have that inkling that just something doesn't feel right, can we go out unannounced? Yes. Caseworkers can file petitions of the court, though they don't like to. Removal is typically seen as the last resort. Really? We are looking for imminent danger to a child. That could be severe sexual, physical, or mental abuse. Do people just kind of slip through the cracks? Our agency is only as good as the information that we're provided. It's critical people provide as much information as possible when it comes to suspected abuse or neglect. By calling us, uh, we will go out and do an assessment. The response will be um, equivalent to what the allegations are. Our goal at the end of the day is to really help and support strengthen families. It is not to take children away. It is not to be punitive. Uh, that happens sometimes, as we talked about, when necessary to protect the child. But our really goal is to go out and, and help children. Grace Greviton, Fox 43 News.